But to give us the big picture and then to drill into what's currently happening, Tommy Robinson uh, now joins us uh, with, with uh, I mean, again, we're going to play video in a moment, too. Shows a Saudi man literally hurting women down the street with a stick. This is routine. If you're out without a hood on your head, you, you know, you get beaten or killed. But we should all accept this because we're liberals. Uh, so, so, so Tommy Robinson saying things now you can get arrested for in England, but he keeps doing it. Uh, here you are beaming into the United States and what's left of the free world. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on, Alex. Well, I've been ranting, kind of setting the table. Give us the big picture. What's going on in the UK? Uh, you know, the current battle. What's happening? So I'll give you the background of where I live. I was, I was born in 1982. When I was born, we had one mosque. Um, there's currently 30 mosques in my town. My town is 30 miles north of London. It was the launching pad for the 7-7 bomb plot. It was the fertilizer bomb plot, the Stockholm bomber. There were Muslims put in jail this year for planning to behead an American um, so soldier on the streets of the UK. Um, currently, 40% of my town is Muslim. I've seen firsthand, I don't, I've seen firsthand the problems that this culture and this ideology will bring to your town. I've seen the attack on your freedom, on your free speech, on your women, on your culture, on your identity, the erosion of who you are. Um, everything comes under attack. And of course, not all Muslims, but this is a reality of what I see. When you were talking a minute ago about, <clears throat> you're discussing inbreeding in the Islamic community. Now, now these are facts, and I understand liberals don't like facts. 3.4% of, of England is Pakistani, okay? Pakistani heritage, 3.4%. They are responsible for over 30% of the birth defects. These are all problems that will come with Islam. In the, in the UK, we've had 66% of British Muslims said they would not report on fellow ISIS fighters. 66%. So when we talk about terrorism, terrorism is very bad. We, we've had 12, 12 planned terrorist attacks last year. No one draws in on that. We, we've had one successful one in, in years, but we don't realize that every year, if they were successful, We'd have had shopping centres, aeroplanes, schools, everything would have been attacked every month. We'd then realise, then the Liberals would realise, everyone would realise we're at war, we're in a war zone here. Now, the terrorism is bad, but the general views, the general consensus of the, of the raping way... Raping in the swimming pools, raping everybody, running around bullying, supporting all this crap, uh, the welfare rates, 80 some percent of the Muslims in Germany are on welfare... I mean, this is just staggering. And then, and then, and then the, the arrogance, the bitching that, they, that everybody has to roll a red carpet out and the grand imam saying, take that web in there. We I mean, it's like a joke. In the UK, 75% of Muslim women are on benefits and 50% of Muslim men. When you talk about taking our women, most recently in Cardiff, which is the capital of Wales, we had an imam who said the time is coming soon when we take the non-Muslim women as sexual slaves. Where we don't need an imam to say that because Muslim men already in our country are taking our women as sexual slaves. We have street-level gang grooming. grooming. They call it grooming in the UK, like it's cutting the hairs of dogs. Really, it's a rape jihad. It's a rape jihad going on in our country where 90% of the convicted perpetrators are Muslim men. 20% of them are called Muhammad. We're told continuously this has nothing to do with Islam. This has everything to do with Islam. These gangs that are raping... That's right, sex slavery. Look at, look at Al-Qaeda and ISIS, all the sex slaves. And let's expand on this, though. What's going on with the left and their true alliance with it? How do they think being bought off by Islam, and I guess because it's anti-West, that's all the left cares about, the Green Party and all them cheering, thank God Germany won't be German, we'll be Islamic soon, and they cheer, you know, in major cities and... and, and you know, the feminist uh, mayor of Cologne says, don't wear miniskirts or the Muslims will rape you. It's your fault. It's like, because they're the feminists, they've now become the anti-feminist. It's a cult. What the hell's going on with the left? There, there seems to be in the left a, a strong alliance between the Marxists, the communists, and Islam. And, my, my, and I, believe they, I believe they think they can use Islam. They confuse, because they're against the rule of democracy. They're, they're against the rule of law. They're against democracy. And I believe they really think they can use it to bring it down not understanding that they'll be the first victims of it. And whether this, whether this view that you could import Islam into our country and combine the two together, it's like oil and water. Now, when you have Angela Merkel, you have David Cameron, you have all world leaders saying that multiculturalism has failed, they're just too cowardice to say Islam has failed. And let's expand on that. My biggest issue with Islam is 
it does come in and try to make you conform and all over Germany says you can't have outdoor Oktoberfest because the Muslims come and attack you because they don't like seeing men and women running around having a great time eating big old, you know, beef stew and sausage and drinking beer outside. I mean, it's just crazy in a nice, cool, you know, night. They don't like people having a good time. It's a it's a cult of killjoys. And I'm and I'm just we're not gonna put up with it. And I don't understand what the hell the left is doing backing this. So my biggest problem is it's not compatible, and the left is trying to get rid of our speech so we can port to it. No. Sorry. And I think they, they wish to maintain power. Now, if, if I bring you back to my hometown again, if you look at the demographical growth forecast for the communities in my town, by 2030, the Pakistani and the Bangladeshi communities will increase by 70 to 77%. The white and black community will increase by 1.3% to 1.4%. That's not even so replacement. They, now that they see the future. The future is with Islam. The future is with Muslims having 5.6 children, us having 1.3. So the Labour Party in my town, which is the left-wing Labour Party, the equivalent of your Democrats, they completely see that we, we as white working-class Englishmen, we are irrelevant. We do not matter anymore. The future is not with us. That, so they're, they're Biden... But here's the deal. It's not even like we're being racist. They're totally race and religion-based, and then they won't even let us just die and them take over. They want to piss on us while they take over, and the left is just running around because they hate the West so much, just it's celebrating their own destruction. It, it's crazy. There's a great speech. There's a speech by Shahid Malik, who was the first Muslim minister of the Labour government, and he said in 2004 we had one Muslim MP. In 2006, we had two Muslim MPs. In 2008, we had four Muslim MPs. In 2010, we had 10 Muslim MPs. And in between saying each thing, he says, inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. He says, within 30 years, the leader of this country will share our faith. And there's thousands of... And he's in our government. He's a right-hand man to our government when the Labour Party were in. There's thousands and of And the Muslims next period. comes convert or die, convert or die. And let's expand on that. What do you make of the Daily Beast and others making fun of the Muslims? The Muslims never take over a country. How ridiculous. Ha, ha, ha. We've got the clip in a moment of them at, you know, the palace saying, if the queen doesn't convert, she's got to leave. That's what Islam always does. Then they act like we're insane making this up. Anyone who understands history understands this happened to 45 countries. What, what I don't understand is, for the first country in history, why would Britain or Europe be any different to every other place that Islam has ever gone in history, the whole of history. What makes us different? It is exactly the same Islam. It hasn't changed. It's not like you take Muslims out of Afghanistan and you put them in Britain and they're somehow different. It's the same book. It's the same Quran. It's the same people. It's the same ideology. This is the speech by Shalim Malik. We're going to show the speech after the break, but since you mentioned it, uh, let's play the clip that, that CNN played. But then they make jokes and say, oh, it's ridiculous, like 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 Muslims would ever, you know, take over or anything, even though they all say they are and say we're weak and can't believe how pathetic our leaders are. Uh, let's go ahead and play that short clip. Here it is. Or she'll have to leave. Now, here's another one. Video shows Saudi man literally hurting veiled Muslim women with a stick in this brand of Islam. Feminists want to import to the West. And that's all of Saudi Arabia that controls Sunni and Wahhabist culture that is 79% of Islam and taking over the rest of Islam very, very quickly. Because there are some Muslim cultures that actually value women and life and everything. They're being eradicated. The biggest killers of Muslims are Muslims. I mean, I just... I, I don't, I don't get it, my friend. If you understand how deep this has gone and how infiltrated our country and systems are. So the, the most recent Westminster attacker, the, the terrorist, uh, Khalid Massoud, he, he, was, he, went, he taught at a school in Luton. The director of the school is the local imam from the Luton Islamic Centre, yeah, who's a radical. I've been on the radio with this man where he said he wishes to execute homosexuals. This same radical mosque was the mosque that the Stockholm bomber went to. Now... This radical imam is part of my town's government project of Luton in Harmony. There's pictures of this man hugging a police officer with Celebrate Diversity. This is a man who wishes to enforce Sharia law. And then I find out then that the training of our government, the training of our police, the training on Islam is being given to them by the Wahhabist Salafist leading imam, who's when, they, when Ofsted raided the school at his mosque, 
They found that the children were be being taught in their library how to cut off hands and feet. They have infiltrated everything. Our government, our prison system, our education system, our universities, everything, everything is being used. And the left and the far left are facilitating and accommodating this as it happens. And, and let's be clear, it's in the Quran. It's a fact that everything inside Islam is the house of Islam. Everything else is the house of war. That's why they're constantly killing each other because the most radical groups always say they're in charge and, and everybody else is a heretic. It is the most anti-liberal thing the galaxy's seen. It is joke level. And to watch foaming at the mouth leftist and big foundations uh, funding it makes my head spin. Tommy Robinson uh, is former uh, and ex-leader of the English Defense League. Uh, since leaving the EDL, he has become an avid speaker and the problems of the Western world, rise of extremism, Islam, ISIS, and hate speech in Sharia. And if you expand all this, the Muslims admit in the Quran, we go, we lie, we assimilate, we act like we're with it, and when our number hits a certain point, then we call it radical Islam that starts killing. Then we say, oh, just capitulate to us and we'll stop the attacks. And we just saw the Turkish leader Ergun, and we just saw his foreign minister tell Germany, tell France, and tell Sweden, you will let us in, you will let us politically organize, and have basically political takeover, or we will burn your country down in a, quote, holy war. That's a quote. Burn your country, holy war, all of it, and and and, and all this crap. And, I mean, that's pure terrorism. That's threatening terror. If you don't give them politically what they want, that's the definition. See how suddenly Turkey played nice for 50 years. Oh, we're Western, we're Western. They were conquered by Islam. Then all of a sudden, the, the everybody's going back to the traditional dress. Ergun's an Islamicist. He's merging with the Wahhabist. They, it's, it's total deception. It's, it's a culture of pure war, pure takeover, totally political, that literally runs women as slaves and is absolute nightmare. I, I just cannot believe that, that our elites are siding with this. Why are they doing it, Tommy? I don't, what, what, Americans, what Americans have to understand, what you have to realize is just how quick this can happen. Yeah. So as a, if you'd have said to the people in my hometown, which would have been my parents, if you'd have said 30 years ago, in 30 years' time, there'd be 30 mosques, there'd be banning the emblem of your country, there'd be changing the name of Christmas, every single food will be halal, your troops will be attacked in the streets, your, your women will be raped and attacked on a daily basis. If you'd have said that 30 years ago, people would have said, never, not here. Yeah. It's happened. It's already happened. There's no comeback from my hometown. OK, they, they control the streets, they control the gangs, they control the drugs, they control the town, they control the council. That's it. That's right, because they admit they'll deal drugs or anything because it's OK as long as you're selling it to the to the to the Kaffirs, which is what they and call black like, people. But they call everybody else that it means slave. That's openly admitted. Yeah, as, as, as long as they, they don't care, as, they, they can commit crime as long as it's against the Kaffir. They use their religious, their religious intolerance against non-Muslims to justify everything. To justify everything. Now, Americans, you may look and think, and, and in the UK, since 1960, the Muslim population doubles every 10 years. So when you look around, I can mean I've seen it. I've looked around an estate where, where I'm from, and five years later, it's like, what the hell's happened here? How has this happened? Oh my God. And, and so what's America, crazy is I, I I was brought up classically liberal, want to be open to stuff. They literally, all the videos, they laugh. It's a joke. The arrogance, because they have no respect for us that we are. Uh, th that we've done this. No, they have no respect because we're so weak. They do laugh at that. And funny enough, I, I oppose Islam. I, I get quite a lot of Muslims shaking my hand and they say, I'll shake your hand because I believe, in you, but I believe you have courage. Because they're not used to people standing up to them and speaking honestly. They're used to people appeasing and bending over and, and showing weakness to them. And as a country, what you have to understand, it hasn't happened to your country yet, but they'll be on their way to try. Well, hold on, it. tell us what's coming next. And I want to play the clip of that member of parliament who admits, you know, it's a takeover. And, of course, the Muslims won't let you come to your, their country and, and set up your system. They'll kill you in a second. See, that's the thing. Go ahead. This happened. This has all been done intentionally. So the fighting spirit and the fighting people has been taken out of them. It's been bred out of them uh, with a left-wing... If, if I just talk... So I'll, I'll bring you back again to my children. Yeah? My daughter, when she was seven. I'm preparing for a debate, so I've got the biography of Muhammad. My daughter walks past, she looks... She says, Muhammad, peace be upon him. I haven't spoken to my children about Islam or Muhammad. I've never spoke to them about it. I said, what did you just say? Muhammad, peace be upon him. Okay? And I said, That's, that, this is all from school. I've then gone to, I've then, when she's, she's mentioned, she's seen something which is a mosque, and she said, that's a special place where Muslims pray. 
Part of the national curriculum for every school in the UK is the children aged seven and eight go to visit the mosque where they're lied to. That's happening here in the US in, 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 in high school and middle school and elementary. They're forcing them to study Islam. For, forced to study, and like, I wouldn't mind if they brought my daughter to a mosque and said, our prophet married a child your age. Our prophet beheaded 600 people. Our prophet, our prophet killed poets. Our prophet raped women. It, tell the truth, tell the truth, but they're not. They're saying that jihad means inner struggle, that Islam is a religion of peace. They're lying and, and indoctrinating children from a young age. So when you talk about where is the fighting spirit gone, you have to understand that as an English kid born up where I live, white English people in the town are a minority. Now, we've never once, when it's St. Lucian Day, massive celebration. St. Patrick's Day, three-day festival, that's the Irish. When it's Eid, fairgrounds, parks, celebrations. When it's St. George's Day, that's our national day to celebrate who we are, banned. You bring in an emblem of St. George to your school, you will be suspended. So what you then find is that English kids are walking with their heads down. They don't know who they are. They don't know where they've come from. By the way, I'm going to interrupt you just to back you up. I have mainstream news articles in Germany and the UK where parents are countermanded and their children are forced to go to mosque. I mean, this is insane. Yep, that, that, this is what's happening. And, and, and then you have, so then you have a generation of children who don't know who they are. The, 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 the West Indian community can be proud of their history. The Pakistani community are allowed to be proud of their identity, but the English people aren't. So let's not forget, St. George's flag, I've heard, has been banned off government buildings, correct? Uh, it's banned. So, so if someone's in a council house and they fly the St. George, there's been many times that they're told to take it down. There's, there's, what they've managed to do is install in people that the emblem of St. George, the emblem of our country, if you celebrate it, you're racist. That's what they've managed to do. And, and there was no history of that. They just chose it because it's the original English flag. Yeah, you, you have to understand just how powerful political correctness is. You have to understand how where fear, fear is paralyzing. And the fear of being branded racist has paralyzed the nation. It's paralyzed our government. It's paralyzed our people. It's paralyzed people so much so that, that the police, the government, allowed 1,400 young children to be passed around and raised. Oh, yeah. Tell folks that was, you talked about that years ago. It was now been confirmed. The Muslim grooming program of pedophilia, which is legal under Islam. Uh, now, I guess if you're adult men, you're not supposed to do it. But as long as a kid, you're screwing. It's okay. Uh, again, I don't care so, if it's heterosexual, homosexual. Don't touch kids. But see, now NAMBLA and others are trying to mainline. I think that's one reason the globalists like it. The globalists are into pedophilia. We know that. And Islam is too. So, so spend a few minutes on those scandals. And for radio listeners, if you're watching on Infowars.com forward slash show, as he speaks, my crew Googles it and is showing mainstream news reporting it. But, oh, we banned St. George's flag. It's good. Oh, it's okay for Muslims to have sex with kids. In fact, in Germany, they're like, oh, they raped a five-year-old. It's okay. It's their culture. So please continue. Really, sir. So, so it, in, a, in a small town in the north of England called Rotherham, so for years I warned and spoke about men prostituting our young kids, gang raping them. When the families go to the police, the police do nothing. The police refuse to do anything. Yeah. What's and, the headline? Because I remember seeing this last year. Tell folks the headlines so we can pull it up. It was... Uh, put, this is Rotherham rape scandal. Just put, it, put in the city of Rotherham, it, which is for, put in 1400 Rotherham. There was 1,400 children. And the report, the government report from a charity, it found that when some dads got together to go and rescue their daughters who were 12 years old, they got to the house where the Muslim men have all got their daughters. The police turned up and arrested the dads. The police turned up and arrested the dads for trying to save their daughters. Another time... Let's be clear, let's be clear. The Muslims are famous. That's what you call white slavery. It means sex slavery. People are so going to say white slavery is a big issue in Islam. They go, what about blacks being slaves? White slavery means sex slavery, folks. And, yes. and Islam, that's a tenet of it. Its main business is the trafficking of women. So it says, and multiple children. it says multiple times in the Quran that outside of your four wives, you can take whatever your right arm possesses. Sexual slaves. And it's, it's legitimate. It's sanctioned. It's okay. Muhammad By the way, I'm showing BBC headlines. This was last year where they tell folks about it. It all came out, admitted, and they're, they're kind of saying, well, it's Islam's culture. Let, and again, the dads uh, try to get their little daughters, 10 years old, 9 years old, 8 years old, out of these things, and arrogant Muslims call the cops, and the police say, this is on the news, your daughters belong to them now. The, the, uh, another, another situation in this government report. So I've been warning this for years, and I was called a liar and extremist. Yeah? In this government no, I read report, you 10 years ago saying this was happening, and I didn't believe it. No, that, that, no one did. 
And then only now, so 10 years later, everything we've said, we've been vindicated for. Everything we tried warning about. And what has actually come out, it's come out that the government knew, the police, 60 police officers are under investigation. Because the British government's full of pedophiles. They love it. Um, yeah, the council knew, social services knew. They were actually conspirators. There was a conspiracy of silence from police and religious leaders to facilitate the rape of our youth. The handing over of our children. Now, describe how they do it, because this is now happening here. I noticed, like, Islamists have kind of merged with the Mac Daddy uh, gangster culture, and I and I see a lot of this going <laughs> on where it's very, very aggressive sexualization. And, and when I was in London, I've seen it, where you see, like, Islamic men on the street but kind of dressed in, like, uh, you know, rapper-type outfits with girls that look like they're 14. What's going on there? So that's the start of it. I, 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 that's, that's the start of it. So what, it's a grooming process, and I, and you can see it happened to my, it happened to my cousin. 13 years old, gang raped by men, dozens of men. She woke so talk up about your own family. I know you get upset, Tommy. Walk through what happened, what got you motivated. Tell folks about it. So so, so basically, I, I had, when I was younger, she was just, when I was younger, and I can remember all of this, I can remember the family meetings about it, to go into the police, the police not doing anything. She woke up naked in a house with bearded Muslim men all raping her, gang raping her. She run naked from the house. She run naked from the house. And, and 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 this has happened. This is happening to girls across our country. And when the, when people went to the police, which only now people understand, the police were in on it. The government were in on it. Everyone that they, they were not arresting or doing anything. There's another situation where five Muslim men had a young 11 year old girl in a in a derelict home. Yeah, the police turned up. They found the five men abusing her. They arrested the girl for drunk and disorderly. They let the men go. They, must, they let the men go. And, and do you know the reason given in the government report for why this was allowed to happen? Because the, the police did not want to be seen as racist. Yeah, well, here's that the deal. Here's happened. the deal. Anybody does anything to my daughters like that, you're not going to worry. And I'm not just talking. The reason everybody's so polite in the South was, you know, people used to kill for no reason. I'm done. And I just, these Muslims, everybody else needs to know, you walk on me, you're going to get it. And the cops, too. You st I mean, I am so... And, and it's not all the police around the world, obviously. What the hell happened in the UK? Uh, because so what, what, privately, what, what, I've met with MI6, MI5 folks when I cover Bilderberg and police. Most of them are actually listeners. They said, we're pissed. We don't like what's happening. The, so, I mean, it, it, but but I guess it's certain towns. I mean, how? Uh, let's go over... Because I, I actually know the answer. Muslims, once they get control of councils, then they intimidate the police, Correct. Co correct, and what and what the police do, and what the Muslims do, is that they, they focus on young girls from broken backgrounds who don't have a father. Just like up. Sandusky did, they go after troubled youth. They go after troubled girls. They go after troubled girls, and then they and then they and then they rape, they abuse, and only now, like thirty years later, this has been going on for thirty years. In, in, and and it's this is not this is in every single town and city. And we're supposed to, the minute you talk about it, like, I'll, I'll give you another example. I was sat there watching the news of this unfold. I saw the English Defence League supporters protesting outside the police station of Rotherham. I then saw the journalists snigger and mock the English Defence League supporters. One of the girls in that crowd, because I was watching it and I know her, was gang raped for years by Muslim men. And then not only are you abused and you're a victim once, you're a victim twice to the media, you're slandered, you're humiliated. And by the way, these women in Sweden, Germany, England, we have videos, we can't even show you the ones that aren't edited, we have an edited one, of the woman being torn apart with Muslim men raping her at the anti-racism conference. Concert. The women go to this to hand them flowers, they grab them and then rape them, and the police stand there and watch it. This is insane. Well, the, the police are, the police are terrible. That, that is what you have to understand for how powerful political correctness is. Now, you have to understand that not just on this rape issue, anything, so anything that's taboo to dealing with the Muslim community is not dealt with. So if raping little at, kids is okay because the taboo <laughs> isn't pedophilia now, and rape, the taboo, is hurting Muslims' feelings. It's hurting Muslims' feelings. Even, even for example, female genital mutilation. 5,700 girls in Britain last Uma year. Uma Abedin, uh, Hillary Clinton's girlfriend, literally her mother is the global head of the push to genital mutilate and to make sure it's legal in the West. I wrote an article about it and the media made jokes and said, so what? I'm obsessed with women's, uh, yeah, well, actually I am, but the point is, but yeah, don't chop, I am, don't chop it off. Literally, the liberals are promoting genital mutilation now. What planet, what kind of fruit balls are these? I mean, what the hell's going on? 
It's so, it's so bad. It, it, the situation in our country, and this comes from everything. So you watch for years as Muslims, pre and they know it. They laugh. If the police turn up to an incident, as I've been growing up, if young, as young white English men, if there was a confrontation with young Pakistanis anywhere in the town at, at, at night time, the police would turn up, jump straight on the white Englishmen. Every, so the, 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 the Pakistanis, they laugh. They're confident. They know no one touches them. They know they have control. And then it, there's another incident, Alex, which if I explain to you, a, a, Muslim, a Muslim Tory MP uh, who was going for MP um, called Afsal Amin, yeah? Now, I, I ended up wearing undercover footage. He approached me, offering me money, yeah? This was to try and get him into Parliament. He had already been asked by David Cameron what seat he wants on, on the government, what seat he wants on the committee. When, when I had the undercover footage, I had him in a meeting. He was in a meeting with Pakistani gangsters who were funding him. They actually said in the meeting, once he gets into Parliament, that's our man on the inside, the police can't touch us. How, other, how many other members of the Muslim Parliament are working for gangsters, are working for criminals who are stopping the police do their job? It's corruption to the maximum level. Any one of you can, you can Google this case. It's as, 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 Afsal Amin. He was the captain in the British Army uh, for 10 years. After I exposed him, it turned out that before he joined the British Army, he wrote a leaflet about the Mujahideen attacking us and converting our country through war to Islam. He was undercover in the British Army as a captain for 10 years. He was about to be one of the highest ranking members of our parliament. He, he, says, he says in the undercover footage, his goal is to be prime minister. He, he was also talking about mass, mass funding from Qatar for, for the city. This is what's happening across our country. They have bought our politicians. That's right. We've been under globalist. We've been under globalist indoctrination to be domesticated. They brought in super third world, stone age, cult brainwashed groups that are just, I mean, we could show you endless footage of women just grabbed at concerts, gang raped, and, and the police just stand there. And these women are panicked. They're out of their minds in horror. And these guys are raping them hour after hour. The women are hospitalized. Sometimes they kill them. They'll just run up and grab a woman's baby and throw it right in the water. And it's all just a big sacrament of the left. We're going to skip this break so we have more time. This is a total death cult takeover. And Zuckerberg and all of them are now making deals to, to uh, report Muslims in countries that criticize Islam so they can be killed. Uh, but it's okay because he's liberal and smiles and has an Asian wife. So it's, it's okay. We're murdering everyone. We're Zuckerberg. We're liberal. Eh, liberal. And, you know, it's, just, it's all totally sick because they believe Islam has the numbers and it's still primitive. They've made us not primitive with the defense mechanism. We're like dodo birds just waiting there to be, you know, hit over the head. This is happening. But who was the member of parliament? We, we actually found the clip who said, you know, every 10 years we Shalid double. Malik. What's his name? Sh Shalid Malik. Yeah, we're going to play that clip right now. Let's, let's play the clip of that member of parliament. Here it is. I'm proud of the achievements of the Muslims of this country from 97. In 1997, we got our first Muslim MP. In 2001, we had two Muslim MPs. In 2005, we had four Muslim MPs. Inshallah, in 2009-10, we'll have eight Muslim MPs. In 2014, we'll have 16 Muslim MPs. At this rate, the whole parliament will be Muslim. But just to say, in case there are journalists here today, that is not my objective. <laughs> but you know, we've got four Muslim MPs. There should be 20 Muslim MPs in Parliament. And inshallah, very shortly we'll see that. And I'm confident, as Britain's first Muslim minister, that inshallah, in the next 30 years or so, we'll see a prime minister in this country who happens to share my faith. You know what's sick? Their cultures can't even operate because they're so evil. And then we just roll over when we've got everything and just say, take it all and destroy us. And we've got... Go ahead, sir. We've got a Muslim mayor of London, Sadiq Khan. Oh, yeah, who, oh, banning banning women in bathing suits and advertising and saying he's not a, quote, Uncle Tom. He is for Islamic takeover. And then making jokes about the terror attack last week. What a piece of filth. Let's talk about him. Not allowing Christian, not allowing Christian advertisement on buses, but allowing advertisement that says praise to Allah. Um, currently banned the Sikh community from celebrating their, their, their celebration on the 29th of April. He's putting bans, so he's dictating to them. That, so when, when, when he said, Shalid Malik, we will have a prime minister that shares our faith, mark my words, you can bring this video up in four years' time. Once he's finished being the mayor of London for four years, he will become the leader of the Labour Party. The left and the liberals, as they did in London, will swarm for him and vote for him as a great sign of tolerance. That sign of tolerance, who is he working for? 
That's what I want to know. The same as the one I exposed. Who is this man working for? What are his interests? Is it the what inbreeding your... that makes these guys, no matter what country it is, look so insane? I mean, or is it like, is it satanic? Because there's just like a crazed evil about it. I mean, how would a bunch of men show up at a concert? That never happens in the West ever. And just start raping women. I mean, if I saw men raping women, I don't care if it was 20 of them. I mean, I'm not bragging. I would attack them. I mean, I, I, I don't understand this. I don't understand what the hell's going on here. But when you read the cases, it's brother-in-laws. So men with their wife's brother, with their dad, with their dad. I'll tell you another case. Another case from a father I met from Blackpool who comes to me crying and breaking down and crying and crying and crying because his daughter had been groomed and taken as, as a thing, uh, as a victim. And the young Muslim that was raping her rang the dad's phone and left it on the side while him and his father raped her. So the dad listened to it. These, and, and these sort of things, when you hear this, yeah, people think it's unbelievable. Pick up, read, read the government report. Why is it that the Muslims like to, like you said, we're going to rape your daughter, we want you to listen now. It's like a, it's an enjoyment too. It's a, it's a pleasure. Because, because by taking our women, it's the, the first thing to attack is our women. It, it's the first, there's a sign against us to destroy us, destroy the daughters. You hear them saying it. Oh, remember the, is, remember the, the, the imam of Jerusalem, the head imam goes, they are weak, we will take their women, we are ah, so good. And then the left's like, yes, yeah. If you, if you look at an interview by one of the leading al-Qaeda operatives years ago, and they give their plan for Europe, and in their plan from Europe, they predict the, 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 government, the, the American invasion of the Middle East, and then they say that the next invasion, which will be Syria, um, our forces will be too weak because of the previous ones, and they'll be able to establish a caliphate. And then when it gets to 2016, 2016, it says the Islamic invading army will invade Europe. And at the start of 2016, attack the women. What happened on New Year's Eve in 2016? 2,000 women were attacked in Cologne by 1,000. And they're teaching us to accept it, and now they have 3 million more about to come across from North Africa with the head of the EU ordering her to let them in. But let's explain. John Brennan admittedly converted to Islam more than 20 years ago in the CIA. He was a communist before. He's the guy that's sworn to bring down Trump. The reason it all seems messianic and the Muslims think they're invincible now is traitors in Western governments have laid out a blueprint to capitulate to Islam, bring it in, make all other Western freedom end to, quote, serve them. The problem is Ergun's launching an early saying, I'll burn down Europe unless you submit to me. So I think their greed is what's going to undo them. What is the hope? Tommy well, Robinson, I'll how do we defeat them? Well, I, I don't know why they don't just shut up, because they'll win anyway. Just be silent. You don't need to blow things up. You have, you're, in France, you're having 7.1 children. In France, in, in England, you're having 5.6. So when, when you say, what is the hope? The hope and our, our only, or the hope is, up until 12 to 18 months ago, I had no hope. I, I had no hope. Um, Donald Trump getting in, I think, for us, gave us hope. It's a change. Gert Wilders rising. I'm looking at four years' time at the election. I don't think it's this election. I think they'll be able to stop Marie Le Pen again. But in four years' time, Gert Wilders will win. Le Pen will win. When we get a leader win in Europe, whether it be the Swedish Democrats, when the first leader comes in Europe who challenges Islam, who not just challenges it, but enforces the laws that are already here. When they break the law, you enforce the law. But in the minute we don't, we let them do what they want. When you try to enforce the law, you realise you can't. You could not enforce the law now on 4%. You have to understand that only 4 to 5% of the UK is Muslim. <laughs> Look at the chaos caused. What do we think as a country is going to be? And what number normally? Is, isn't it once they hit 10%, they always try to take over? Yeah, 10%, but they're starting already at 5%. Look, look at Europe. Look, so, so it is 10%. But I, I say yeah, but France, people, is, France is over 10% now. And look, seven, 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 I believe. No, it's coming up to 10, is it? Yeah. But that's the document. Million, they think there's like million, another 5 million, million illegals. Well, what about yeah, yeah. illegal numbers? I mean, we know about, what about the countless videos of the hijacking cars and robbing everything and just running around foaming at the mouth? I sat down with my local imam when I spoke about the figures for Luton. And um, I, I said to him, we have, what it's, it's supposedly at the time was 60,000 Muslims. Double it. That's what he said straight away. Double it. I said the All right, I got to go to break, but I need you five more minutes with us before the next host takes over. I want to come back and let you plug websites and, and, and other things that are happening with Tommy Robinson, tommyrobinson.co.uk. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to sit up here with all this rhetoric because I didn't want the wars against Islam. I didn't want to stir it all up. I'm not against anybody. I'm just telling you, I've studied it. It is crazy town. And it is a total takeover, and the, and the globalists are allied with it, and it must be resisted. I mean... Everything he's saying is not exaggerated. It's worse than he can tell you. That's the problem. We have so much evidence, you can't even go over 10% of it.
uh, please support this broadcast. They're censoring us. They're censoring anybody else that exposes this. When it was years ago, I put something out exposing um, Orthodox or Radical Islam, I'd be banned. We have to just go ahead and expose that and let folks know this is the info they don't want you to have. Religiously, every day, Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com, the articles, the videos, the guests, whatever you think is most important, get those and send them out. Make sure that you're in your YouTube subscription, you know, opening those up and sending those videos on to others. Be sure you join our free emails. We can send you messages as we get censored more and more. They'll go directly to you, Infowars.com forward slash newsletter. And we've got big specials that end uh, tomorrow, 30% off the uh, nascent iodine and the BioTrue, super high quality organic selenium, so much more. Uh, thank you all for your support. Hour number four coming up. We're back in 70 seconds. We'll do five more minutes with our guests and the next host is going to uh, take over. That's Anthony Cumia. I knew globalism was unpopular and authoritarian and evil. I knew people claimed they were going to merge with Islam and some backstab op, and I just thought that was too crazy. It's happened. So I'm just here telling the truth no matter where the chips fall. I think this should become the new iconic GIF. We should create a GIF for folks. It's a short five-second video of the uh, Saudi man literally hurting veiled Muslim women with a stick. We should cut it into the liberal women going Allah Akbar and just denying because they hate the West so much that any other culture... Could be horrible. Were the Nazis bad? Were the Aztecs cutting people's hearts out bad? This is going on. This has to be called out against. We must say no. Anthony Cumey is coming up. Uh, going back to Tommy Robinson, tommyrobinson.co.uk. What other in the four minutes we have left are key points and what else can we do to win? I think just stop being afraid of political correctness and break its will, right? I mean, they used to send the cops to your house all the time. I've seen the live videos harass you for even your free speech. That's nothing. It's the truth. But now it seems like you've, you've actually been defeating them and that they now have been backed off. They come to my house this morning, Alex. Oh, really? They drop all the time. So tell us about that. <laughs> they come to my house to ask my whereabouts on Saturday because I'm going to cover an anti-terrorism march in London. There's going to be a terrorism march in London against terror. So I'm going there. So they come to my house to say, what are your plans? Why are you going? What are you doing? And mainly because they're concerned for my safety, they said. They're concerned for my safety because they know Muslims wish to kill me. Um, I, think that, I think that what people have to understand is, when I started out against this, I was ready full well and understood the challenge I was taking on with the threats of violence from Muslims. What I was not ready for and could not comprehend at all was the state persecution against myself, against my family. So the state have chosen a side in this battle. It's not the side of freedom and democracy, it's the side of Sharia. Yeah? And what can we do? What can every one of us do? It's our job to enlighten, to wake people up, to educate people. I'm, I'm grateful to your show, Alex. I'm grateful to Paul Joseph Watson. He's changing the scene. He's, ch he's waking so many people up. It's brilliant to Is watch. he not a wrecking ball? Isn't it good to see oh, that? Oh, man. Man, it's, it's, it's so, I sit there and get so much satisfaction because you have to understand that 10 years ago when, when, when I was doing this, it was a lonely place. It was a lonely place and now I'm seeing so many people waking so many people up. That's all I see my job as. My job is to, what well, I don't talk about. So I come on and debate people sometimes. I debated some expert on multiculturalism, yeah? He's a speechwriter for Kofi Hannan from the EU. When I asked him, I said, where do you live? Yeah? Where are you from? Where are you born? He's born, when I got down to it, 99.9% .9 Christian white area. Okay, I'm born as a minority English man living in a town with 30 mosques. That's right. The, the rich liberals do not live around it. You look where they all live when they lecture other people. They're in 99% they're in white areas. These Hollywood celebrities, all of them. All of them. Are, so it's, what's good for us? You don't understand what it's like for us. You don't understand what you're doing to us. You don't understand, what, you don't understand the fear I feel, the gut-wrenching fear in my belly for my children. I've got three children, and you are destroying and putting their safety and their freedom in jeopardy. And I, I, that's why I always say, if there's going to be trouble and there's going to be a struggle, let me struggle, don't let my son struggle. And that's what they have to understand what they're doing. And they don't, even they don't understand, because I, say, I put it into two camps of people, those who have been affected by Islam and those who are yet to be affected by Islam, because one day they will, and then they'll wake up. And do you know how many people I see contacting me and commenting saying that a year ago I thought you was a fascist, a year ago I didn't believe you, and now, now you've woke me up, you've woke me up. That's our job. And platforms like Infowars, platforms like Rebel Media, these are the platforms that will wake the public up because mainstream media are lying, they're dictating, they're working for the other side. That's right. Well, great job, Tommy. And I just wish we could reform Islam 
and just help these people and say, stop marrying your daughter to your brother and just because I don't want to have to kill them. And I, but I mean, they're trying to try and start a war and it's just a man. And then we have all these other wars where our government's attacked the non-radical Muslims like Saddam Hussein is like a westernized guy, great, great guy compared to these people. Uh, so we got rid of him for Saudi Arabia. Again, the radical Muslims just run everything because they'll give all their money and they'll concentrate. They don't even hardly have jobs. Their women do all the work. They sit around. They're just a group of jerks. Tommy Robinson, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.